He's a new creature or a creation or a new creature. Old things has passed away. Let's look what it says in International Standard Version. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, he is a new creature. Old things has disappeared. And look, all things are new. Romans 6 and 4 tells us we are therefore buried with him through baptism and death in order that just as Christ raised from the dead through the glory of his father, we do also in the new life. There's a new life waiting up for you. All you got to do is turn. Don't worry about what people say. One thing I always, one thing I could always say, I never worry about what people say. And they always going to say something about you. When you learn to kick them to the curve and don't worry about if they're not going to roll with you, roll right over. But you got to do your thing and do it right. It's a day dawning. It's a day coming. And every one of us got to meet that bird. We got to get in that box. We got to get there. And I speak life over every one of us in the name of Jesus. I declare by the word of God and by the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit that everything that I'm speaking to you guys tonight will be just what Christ said. Father God, I'm asking you to touch the hearts and the mind of these people. Father God, everybody who's listening, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare and decree the power of the Spirit all over their life. Lord, I break off every glass ceiling, every negative word, every black hole that ever tried to come against them, Father God. Every negative word that may have come from their hymn knowledge, Father God. I command under the authority of the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit that your spirit will move up and down in their homes and all around, that it will convict, it will arrest, and it will shut down every negative thing that's not like God. Father God, I come against every form of thyroid in the name of Jesus, Father God. Every form of throat cancer, every form of lung cancer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That even as you go over to the children's hospital, Father God, walk the corridors in that hospital, Father God, and begin to move, Father God, as you said in Matthew 15. All the people who came before you, Father God, was lame, sick, and afflicted, but you healed every last one of them, Father God. All those young children over in that children's hospital belong to some parents, some mother who can't sleep at night. Father God, I command the word of God that you send forth your spirit in the name of Jesus, Father God, and begin to heal and begin to transform, begin to change and begin to convict and begin to arrest every one of the young children under the unction, under the glory, under the authority of the Holy Ghost. And Father God, I command the word on every household, even this household, that every door and every shackle in this door will be locked according to the presence and the power of the spirit. And that won't release, Father God, into the time you let us out. Everything in our homes, Father God, and everything the home is all about, Father God, will never be taken and never be destroyed. It'll never be loosed out of anybody's hand. I speak this over every home. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now that your mortgage will not go dead. I believe God is going to send a man along to help you in your mortgage. In the name of Jesus, I come against every late car note, in the na- every rent note. In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree by the word of God that even in the midst of all the very diabetic problems going on in the life of people, Father God, begin to loose in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I pray for the nation in the name of Jesus Christ. And that I declare, Satan, you got to let them go. You got to take your hands off of them. I'm asking the women to wail. I'm asking the man to pray. I'm asking you to intercede on the behalf of your country and your people that you may receive that what God has in store for you. Nothing never moves until you begin to intercede God's hand. When you intercede to God, God's hands begin to move. Father God, I declare by the word of God every form of stomach cancer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth every form of heart condition every form of pre-related heart attack even every pre-performed heart attack that ever try to take forth Father God you will loose it in the name of Jesus stop it in his tracks in the name of Jesus and let the young man and woman God live in the name of Jesus Lord give them hope to understand and realize that your God are beside you that's all I declare the word I decree in the name of Jesus your Father God, I speak a word over our whole 1980 class that I decreed in the name of Jesus, even before the last one that went to the grave, Father God, now one of them ever have to die. I decree by the word of God that not only the class of 1980, but the whole city of Saginaw will got to be saved. Save the young men, all the young women, all the young men in every city that's around the United States, wherever it may be a problem, Father God, send forth your angel, Father God, send a Gideon down there to clean up, Father God, to apprehend every robber, every stealer, and try Transform and change them, Father God, that they may love you, Father God, and know that you, you beside you, there is no other. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity tonight. In the name of Jesus, I come against every form of eye condition. 
in the name of Jesus. There's a wired jaw. Father God, you will speak again in the name of Jesus. They will loose the very things off your jaw in that very incident where your jaw was broken. God said there will be reward in the name of Jesus. You will not have to go through the process when he loosed that wire off your mouth. You will be able to speak as clearly as you ever spoke before in the name of Jesus. And as a surgery, Father God, that took place in the life of some individual, Father God, that's laying in the midst of the hospital, wondering whether they're going to live or whether they're going to. God said you should live, that that surgery is not on to death, that God is going to heal you. Oh, even the gout that's in your feet that's been bothering you, God is going to clear all of that up in the name of Jesus. I declare the word right now in the name of Jesus, while it's still fresh in my spirit, that even as we come out, Father God, we'll never go back to what we once was before. And I speak a word of Jesus according to the word of God, according to the purpose and the power of the Holy Spirit, as I release the very anointing of the healing process, of the delivery process on all the women of God to have the opportunity, all the men of God that want the opportunity to hear what the word of God has to say according to the kingdom of God. And even as I begin to go forth and take the time to break this word forth to God's people, I want you to know that God loves you. God cares for you. And he has everything you think that's in store for you. Everything your mind can think of. The Bible says if you trust him, the Bible said according to uh, Psalms 84, 11, no good thing will Christ has hold for you because you walk upright. I'm always going to dedicate this time. People give those an opportunity. They want to give their life to Christ. You, you, you don't have to be in a big position. You, you don't have to be around a bunch of people or be up in a church. You can give your life to Christ right where you are. All you have to do is believe and declare and decree that he died for you. And that he died for you. The word of God said that, that according to the scripture, he said over in the, uh, the book of uh, Romans 10, 8, 9, he said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible said, you shall be saved. Listen to me. For those of you who are listening online, listen to me. And I want you to repeat that to me as we, get to, as we go through this process. The word of God says like this. God loves you. Sin separated you from God. Jesus died for your sins. You can receive Jesus now and know God loves you. Listen to me. The Bible says you got to open your own mouth on this. He said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Come on, somebody. The Bible didn't say, he said, you shall be saved. Listen to me. Repeat this after me. I don't care where you are and what condition you're in. Look, repeat this after me. If, if you got to go to your kitchen, and I take five minutes to get you some water, you ain't got to have the anointing oil. This as assembly to understand that. If you want some oil, then you call me, and I will send you the oil that you need if you don't have it in your household to bless your household. And the way you can contact me is through my website. It's harvestnewlifechurch.com. And you'll see the number 214-870-2146 available for you. And all you got to do is a comment and the address. If you want to leave something for the ministry, you can do that as well. It doesn't matter to me because God going to go forth anyway. I'm not about all the money grabbing and, and, and getting all the change. But I want you to do understand, you got to find a place where you got to pay your tithe and offering to. It doesn't matter who you pay it to, but as long as you pay it. to show God his appreciation that, you gave him the, that he gave you the strength to rise up every morning and go out and do the work. But listen to me on this note. The word God said, if you really want to receive the engraftation power of the Holy Spirit in your life, repeat these words after me. As you have your water, your glass of water there, and just anoint your head with oil. Just, just take the water and anoint your head. Say, Lord, I love you. And repeat these words. Y'all ready? Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins. And I open my heart, Jesus, to let you inside of me. Say, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for my sins. And you were raised from the dead. Listen to me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all you had to say. Now. If you understand the story about the woman at the well, Jesus said, I must go to Samaria. And they forbid it because the Samaritans and the Jews didn't get alone together. But Jesus said, I got to go through Samaria. They said, when Jesus got to the Samarian, over to Samaria, he was weary in his journey. And as he was weary in his journey, there was a woman who sat on the well. And that woman sat on the well, and she began to ask the woman questions and 
about who he is. And Jesus said, you know, you know, I'm I'm Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the woman God said, I perceive that you're a Jew. And us Samaritans don't get along with you. But little Lord, you know, that woman's about to come over to the greatest evangelist that ever lived. Because Christ got to tell her about her own business and what was wrong with her, the reason she was going through what she went through. That woman went got the whole town and brought everybody back. And Christ began to pray for them. They wanted them to stay, but Christ said, oh, I got to leave. And that's the way you designed to do. You designed to receive the word of God. And as you receive the word of God, it get all the raggedy gook and all the raggedy stuff out your life. And as you begin to get all the raggedy stuff out your life, you become a witness for Christ, for what he done for you. He changed your life. Took you off the beer. Took you off the crack. Took you off the, the pills. Took you off whatever it was. Took you off whatever the sex things you was dealing with. All the men that was running in and out of your house. All He took all that away from you. Then he now made you into the woman you wanted to be. Then now you can get a man that you love, and the man will love you. God brought the right person in your life. It doesn't care whether they're black, brown, blue, or white. God got the right person for you. The reason most of us don't have people, because we're so scared of, we're so scared, we're so scared of color. There's nothing wrong. My wife is Caucasian, beautiful woman of God. My daughter's a, a what you call a yellow. I don't know what it is. I'm just my daughter. I don't look at the color. But they're beautiful, and I love them. For those who saw my video, y'all know my little daughters. You won't see the, all the family, but she's in there with me. But it's a blessing for you guys to be with me at Harvest Night Church and Harvest Night Studios. It's such an honor for you guys to come here and be a part of the show. And to my hats off to the woman, First Lady DJ. Uh, 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 she's, she's, a, she's, a, she's, she's been stuck on here. She's been stuck on here. And I thank God for it. She came into the chat and hear what the Word of God has to say. And I pray that that woman of God continue to go stronger with the Lord. And the next time she plays some of those good music uh, songs, she'll play something for Christ for you that'll touch your soul. God bless you. God keep you. I'm Charles Ellis here at Harvest and Church. And we thank God for every opportunity that you guys came in with to be with us on today. God bless you. <laughs>